It is amazing how many things you can do with something so simple as rope. Now today in this episode, we are using the rope from the Dollar Tree, the brown rope and the nautical rope, and I'm going to be sharing a year's worth of ideas that you can recreate in your own craft rooms for all kinds of high-end textural looks. All right, now let's get crafting. I found this container at the Dollar Tree in their party section, and we are gonna turn it into this really high-end farmhouse bucket that's super popular right now and often sells out on a lot of sites. So I took it outside and I spray painted it black, so that way as I'm coiling my rope onto it, you're not gonna see that purple coming through. We don't wanna see that purple. Simply start by putting a dot of hot glue and now we're going to start coiling around in a circle. Keep coiling all the way around until you get to that rim and then when you get there, you're gonna wanna make sure you're staying nice and tight and coming around that edge while pushing it together and making sure all of the rope is nice and tight because we want to make it look as high end as possible and doing that by pushing it together is going to really lock it all in. Now we're going to move on to the handle to be able to hang it up on a hook on your front door, wherever you would like. I always take my rope and I fray it so that it can lay flat and then I can start coiling that rope over and around it. Now you're going to see that this bucket has a swoop in the front and higher in the back. So what we need to start doing is we're still coiling and wrapping around this bucket. We're gonna start coiling where it's wrapping around the front inside of the bucket, coming over the rim and then back around on the back side. When you get around on the back side, you're gonna go over that handle to lock it all into place and then keep repeating that process. Coming around the side, going into the front of the bucket, down inside there, and then coming back up around the back. When you get to the point where you have reached all of the back covered, you're now going to come on the front side, or better yet, the inside on that top part of that bucket to smush that last little bit of the rope handle in between the back side and the front side. You can see here I'm adding in lots of glue, pressing it all in so that handle is nice and sturdy. And now we can start just working on only having to coil inside of the bucket. Go down to however far you would like to go. I went about halfway into the bucket because I really wanted to be able to make sure it was covered. So whatever I put inside, you're not going to see that black. Now to add a little farmhouse charm, I'm taking one of these black garden tag signs, broke off the stick, and all I'm going to do is just simply hot glue that right in the center and it's ready to be displayed. This DIY is kind of popular. I've seen a lot of YouTubers do it, but I want to share some tips and tricks that are really going to make it look more high end versus being kind of half done like I have been seeing. Not dissing anybody, but there is a right way to do things when you're coiling with these ropes. So I took the tray outside, I spray painted it white first, and now I'm going to start coiling on my rope into a little circle right in the center. I put a nice dollop of glue in there and I'm gonna keep coiling. Now this is the trick. You want to make sure your rope is pressed very tightly up to each other. Yes, that means you're gonna to have to purchase some more rope, but the end result is going to look like you purchased this from Pottery Barn. These rope trays from Pottery Barn cost so much money, at least $100 that I know of, and we're gonna do ours for about $13. So once you get to a point that you want to switch to your nautical white rope, you're gonna make sure that you have a nice clean cut on both of the ropes. Tap the glue down in there so you don't have any fraying, but you wanna be careful to not make the glue be stringy or look a little sloppy. So take your time with this, really making sure that that white nautical rope and the brown rope has a nice seamless transition. You're going to keep coiling around in a circle until you get to the edge and then you're going to flip over and this is where I see a lot of people too. They don't finish the underside and I feel like 
it just looks so much better when it's finished and I know it's more rope but again why go through the effort if it's not going to finish the project I just I, I like finished it bottoms backsides I just feel like it just makes it look so much better so you can see here as I'm coming up on the rim of this tray you can see that I'm zigzagging back and forth my hot glue onto the tray and the rope that's going to make sure that everything is bond together really well and all nice and tight now as I'm coiling up further and further and further, we're going to get to the end and we're going to cut off that extra, twist it and tuck it down inside and you've got yourself a beautiful high end rope tray. We're going to take this glass mason jar, some twine, and some rope to create a beautiful everyday DIY project. Start by taking some hot glue and your twine, and we're going to go one direction first, going at an angle with our twine. Once we've gone across, going all the way around, and the spacing apart is about two inches, maybe an inch and a half, then go the other direction so you've got this beautiful crossed twine on your glass jar. Now we're going to go on the bottom of our glass jar and we're going to start hot gluing this on, coiling around in a circle and we're going to come up over the side of that bottom of that jar so that we lock that twine in place and then we're going to do it up at the top as well. But we're going to go around that top rim one time, we're going to pause for a second and I'm going to take three pieces of twine, you can see I just put a piece of painter's tape down and I'm going to just simply braid it so that I can make a beautiful braided rope for the handle. Go ahead and hot glue that on and into place on that upper rim of the jar and then we're going to take our rope again and keep coiling it to lock that handle into place. Coil it all the way down until you get to the point where the twine is and you've got something so special to hang up in your home. Grab yourself two strands of rope, one of these burner oven covers, and then one of the mesh wire baskets, waste baskets from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to cut off right where that side meets the bottom. I'm going to just cut that part off with those cutters going all the way around so I can just pop that off because we're going to turn this trash can into a cloche jar. Now I would recommend if you have sensitive hands, definitely put some gloves on because that wire is going to be a little bit scratchy. But if you are fine with it and you have tough craft hands like mine, my hands are like really tough because I'm always touching hot glue and I've cut myself like a million times on things like this and my hands have just calloused over the years. But I'm going to go ahead and just work that mesh down until I get it to look like a cloche dome. Now I'm going to take some wire and I'm just going to thread it through almost like I'm sewing it. So that way that cloche is nice and tight and it's going to stay into place. Then I'm going to take my big bite and I'm going to take it right into the center, that top round cap that's from the mason jar that we used earlier in this video. I'm going to punch a hole into that middle part, put on the knob that I have here, and then I'm going to come around on the back side and put in a screw to make sure that is all nice and in place so that it's nice and screwed on and nice and secure. I also added a couple extra holes for my crocodile to be able to zip tie that onto the mesh jar itself so it holds and locks into place. Now we're going to move on to that rope and I'm going to just coil it around on the rim coming up over into the middle of the tray and keep wrapping that all around and also add some rope at the top of my closed jar. Now we're going to be making a hanging rope basket using two of these garden chains, 
two mesh basket and six ropes. Go ahead and start by opening up your chains and we're going to count out the length that you would like. I'm not going to give the specific chain just because everybody's preferences are just different. So go ahead and get a length that you would like to have between your two baskets to be able to put your things in. Maybe there's something bigger than just fruit. Go ahead and open up those chain links, pull apart the ones that you don't want, and then go ahead and hook that onto your mesh basket. Now we're gonna go ahead and start taking our rope and we're going to start by gluing a piece down inside of the basket first to get started. Gluing on these mesh baskets is tricky because you're gonna have to make sure it's not dripping everywhere. So I'm putting little dots of glue along those wire mesh bars as I go. Go ahead and coil all the way around and come up to the side. And when you get to that chain, you're going to stop, pull it through that chain hook, and then continue on gluing around that top rim. This is gonna really clean up the look of it and you're not gonna see that white on the mesh basket. Go ahead and do that for all three of the hooks, making sure everything's nice and glued into place, but that you can still also still move around that hook. You don't wanna glue the hook into place with a lot of hot glue on it. So make sure you're gluing the rope to the basket not the hook to the basket, if that makes sense. Then once you've gone all the way around, start coiling inside the basket. And I went around about two, three times into the basket. And then I stopped and cut off my extra. You can see here that I'm going around the hook and I'm just going to keep smushing the rope together so that it's all nice and clean and you don't see that white part on the basket. Once everything has all been glued around, go ahead and take that extra chain open up the end hook and then you're going to hook it up to your second basket. Now you can see here I've already coiled around all my rope and when I got to the top part of that basket I stopped to hook on those chains. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat that same process. Continue to coil your rope around until you get up to that top hook where the two baskets are connected, cleaning it up by making sure you can't see any of that white and we're gonna just keep coiling around with our rope, gluing it into place. So you can see here, here are my chains and making sure that they'll, they will be able to sway and move when they're hung up. Now you can see this is the first chain that we cut apart and took the extras from for the baskets, but we're gonna move on to the second chain so that we have a nice long chain to be able to hang it up somewhere in your home kitchen, craft room, wherever you want, a bathroom. This could be really cute in a bathroom as well. So go ahead and take those hooks, hook them into that little spot that we made for the chains to be able to hold up the two baskets. And voila, you've got yourself an adorable decor piece to hang up and store things in. Go ahead and take some garden tags if this is your jam like it is mine. I'm gonna paint 25 cents and $1 glue them onto the front of my basket to give it that farmhouse flair, but you can skip this if it's not your thing. Once you're all done, hang it up and organize whatever you need. We are gonna take some frames from the Dollar Tree, some rope from the Dollar Tree, some of this ticking stripe fabric, and a picture or two that you're gonna put in your frames. Start by taking your rope and you're going to glue it on the inside of that frame, making sure you can still put a picture in it, but you wanna get as close as you can to that edge. Then just keep coiling it around, going all the way up to the edge, and when you start to get around the outer part of the rim, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're really coming around that side that you don't see any of the frame, so when this lays up against the wall, all you see is the rope there. So go ahead and just keep coiling it around until you've got it all nice and snug and this is what it should look like. Go ahead and repeat that two times and now I'm going to take some painters tape and you can skip this part if you don't want to go too nautical but this is a more summery type craft or if you've got that coastal vibe for your home this works too. So go ahead and take that painters tape paint some white where it's half the frame white and now we're going to come back in with some thinner strips I'm going to tighten that around the white paint and add on these nautical blue American stripes. 
I thought this project was so fun to make. I love the high-end look when it's all done. Now go ahead and pop your pictures in with the glass, locking them all into place. And now we want them to be able to hang up together. So I'm adding on some rope to the back, lining them up, making sure they're straight and gluing them into place. And the ticking stripe fabric is for the back of the frames to clean up the look. Moving on to our next rope DIY, we are going to be painting this pickle jar that I had on hand. I'm going to be going for a sea glass look, so I'm using a regular acrylic paint with Mod Podge. If you want a depression glass look, you're going to use Mod Podge mixed with food coloring dye. That's how you get that see-through look. So with our rope, I'm going to first take that top piece. I'm measuring around the neck and I'm pulling it a little bit longer. And we are going to be doing a macrame braid down this to give it that sea foam, sea glass, nautical look to this jar. Now you're going to see here that I'm going to stretch out a nice long piece of rope. And I want to make sure I get the height of the jar. But we are going to do that times four. So I'm going to take a really long piece. And you're going to see here that the length of this jar, I'm going to have it four times over. So I've got it folded in half, and when I fold that in half again, you'll see that this rope is the same length four times. So once you've got that, you're going to figure out how many strands you want. I am going to end up having six strands because you want to make sure it's an even number. And then go ahead and just create a little loop slip knot. You can see that I opened that loop where the folded end was and pulled it through around that long piece we're going to be tying at the top of the neck. Once you've got six of those in place, go ahead and tie it. Once you've got that tied into place, you're going to go ahead and then take those ropes and you're going to spread them out so they're evenly spaced. Now we're going to start working on our macrame braiding or knotting. You're going to take two one from each side. You can see that I'm not doing the two that we tied on originally. I'm taking one to the left, one to the right, and then I'm going to just do a simple loop knot. Then I'm going to move on to the next. I'm going to take one from the left, one from the right. I'm going to do a simple loop knot again, and we're going to repeat that going all the way around this jar. Once you've gone all the way around, then we move on to the next layer, and we're going to do the same process one from the left, one from the right, and that's going to keep bringing them tied together that gives that netted rope look to it. Once they've all been done, make sure everything's all nice and spread out, and then you're going to repeat it. One from the left, one from the right, and then tie a knot. And we're going to do this all the way down the entire jar until we get to the very bottom. And then when we get to the bottom, we're going to end up finishing this tying process of this macrame. When you get to the very end, you're basically going to tie them all off into a nice knot. You can see that I've got that finishing circle around the bottom, cut off all the extra, and you can set it to the side. Now for the other jar, I'm going to just simply take some of that rope. This is really easy to do, so much faster, and you can do this on different heights, on different jars. It would be so pretty to do a collection of these, especially like a centerpiece on a dining room table. But basically just get that glue started and then you're just going to keep wrapping it around to build up that rope. And you can go as wide or as thin or as built up chunky as you want. Once you've gone around multiple times, cut off the extra and then you can put whatever seashell that you would like to put on the jar. Make sure you put the seashell on the spot where you have finished your rope. And that actually is really great because it's built up a little bit so it can help glue the seashell on even better. Now we're going to move on to some fun fall DIYs using rope. They have a couple different options at the Dollar Tree around the fall season that you can use to cover with rope. 
This goes from being kind of a cheesy decor piece with this crushed velvet on it to it looking more high-end, something that you would see in a really expensive catalog. So go ahead and take off that fabric that they had on there, and then we're gonna go ahead and take our nautical rope. You could use the brown rope too, and you could even paint the rope, which would be really pretty as well. But go ahead and start with the bottom, and you just start coiling around. It's this simple. Once you coil all the way around the entire pumpkin and you get up to the top, the finishing touches are always the most important. Make sure the rope is really close together and make sure the end is all nice and tucked in. Now on the pumpkin that had the crushed velvet, I went ahead and showed you that you can use the original stem or you can go over to the floral section and get some of these little cut up pieces of twigs and branches and use that for a stem which looks more realistic and more, I don't know, just higher end looking. Take that, shove that down in there and do it for however many pumpkins you would like and you've got yourself a beautiful fall decor piece. Now we're gonna take one of these signs from the Dollar Tree. They have these all year long for all the different holidays. Start by popping off all of the 3D accent pieces on it, as well as the rope. And we're gonna take the one and cut it a little bit less than half. So one's a little bit bigger than the other one. Now you're gonna see here that I'm gonna just score off the corners because we're gonna make it look like two large tags. And again, this is just one sign that I made it where one side is a little bit longer than the other, and you can see them here next to each other. This is gonna be such an affordable, high impact decor piece. Now I'm taking some scrapbook paper that I had on hand. The paper is going to be too short, so you're gonna to need to double up some pattern paper, which is just so beautiful in my opinion. I love pattern paper being layered. Go ahead and glue that on. Now, once you've got all your pattern paper on, this is the thing I wanted to share about this rope idea. You don't always have to have the rope be the main focus. Sometimes it can be an accent piece that brings in that warmth, that texture, without it being a lot of rope, a lot of twisting it, gluing it on, <laughs> a lot of that. So you can see here that I'm just taking some of this thinner rope and I'm gonna just wrap it around a couple times, tie a knot and fray the edge and tuck in some of these burlap leaves that they have all at the Dollar Tree. Isn't that so simple? And it's so beautiful sitting on an entryway table. You can even hang these up on a wall or put them up on a fireplace. I just think that these are so beautiful. Now I'm gonna use my crocodile and I'm gonna punch a couple holes because I want to take my next rope and I'm gonna actually thread that through on the top so that we have a nice pretty rope up there as well. So you can see by just playing with this and adding on this rope for texture, it really just looks so beautiful. Make sure you always fray the edges because I just think it looks even more high end. I don't know why, but I just like how that looks. And that's pretty much it. You can do these for any season by just changing up the pattern paper. Now we're gonna move on to a couple of Christmas ideas using rope. We're gonna take three of these nautical ropes. I am going to start by taking those three nautical ropes and I am going to cut them in half because we are going to turn them into this beautiful braided wreath. Now I saw this on a website and it was so expensive and I knew we could make it ourselves and save tons of money. So start by taking those ropes and you're gonna see I'm gonna pull one a little bit further up versus the other one, tuck it underneath. And now this is the trick with this DIY. You wanna keep the three ropes close to each other. So I'm adding some glue in between them. And then we're going to take one of the ropes and always braid it over on top to the left. So you're gonna see here that I'm gonna pull that piece down. I'm gonna keep them separate. And it's kind of like braiding hair, except for you don't have the third piece. So you can see the one that was just under. 
I'm bringing it up and over to the left. And then I'm gonna repeat that same process with gluing all of those ropes together to keep the form. Now this is the important part as you're keeping these moving along and you keep pulling over to the left from the bottom up and over to the left, just like I did here. You're gonna to wanna to remember that we're making a wreath. So you're gonna to wanna to keep manipulating that shape by going over to the side so that we are making a large circle. And this is a pretty large wreath for a front door. So at this point you can see I've come all the way around and now I'm at the very end of my rope and I'm going to come up and over to the left again. I'm gonna tuck it under and glue those ropes into place. Now we're gonna clean up that part that looks a little messy because that's where we're gonna put all of our florals, but we wanna add some color underneath it. This is the reason why we have these open holes. And here is Comet. He couldn't help himself. <laughs> he always loves getting involved with me whenever I'm working on things, especially that look like ropes and ribbons. He always gets up there to wanna to check it out because it looks like something he can play with. So you can see that I cut that ribbon down or fabric, whichever you wanna use, and I tucked it into those areas and glued it so that it is nice and hidden on the backside, but you can see the fabric color coming through where those opening holes are. Then we're gonna glue it all down to a piece of foam core and I went back and forth between my scissors and a craft knife to get a nice clean cut going all the way around it. When you turn it over, I laughed because it looked like a baby teething ring. Do you remember those toys from when a long time ago? I think they still have them where they look like this. But basically it should look like that on the back side. Then you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna add on whatever greenery you would like. I love the frosted fern from the Dollar Tree and then as well as some bells so that they can jingle in the wind. I like to take my ribbon and put the tails on the back side of the wreath and then create my double looped bow for the front side of the wreath. This is gonna allow the bells to not have to compete with that spacing in there so that they can flow freely and the bells and the bow will all be nice in there together. At this point, it's ready to hang up on your door and you can customize the ribbon to whatever color you want. Now let's work on an ornament. I'm gonna take this box and one of these nautical ropes and I'm gonna use my circle template and I'm going to create a ring from this cardboard. You're gonna see that I'm gonna have an inner and an outer ring and you can do this in whatever size you want. We're gonna be making a ring cardboard so that we can make a beautiful mini wreath ornament for your Christmas tree. So once you've got that circle cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and take that nautical rope and I'm kind of loosening it as I'm gluing it down. So it's a little bit flatter as you're gluing it onto that cardboard. And then I'm gonna just go all the way around. When I get back to the meetup point of the start, I'm gonna go and wrap it around the back side. Now you're gonna see that cardboard in there and we don't wanna see that. <laughs> so you're gonna try really hard to make sure you're gluing those sides together so it kind of conceals that cardboard some. Then I added a little bit of twine so that we can hang it up on our Christmas tree. I'm gonna add on some frosted fern and you basically can decorate this with whatever ribbon, whatever greenery you want to for your Christmas tree ornament. These are so beautiful and have such a high end look. I love that they come out with these bells around Christmas time and I usually actually pick up a couple more than I think I am gonna need at Christmas time for other times of year, like around the 4th of July or just other holidays where we could be using a bell. So what we're gonna do is remove that tinsel garland that they have at the top of it and now we're gonna take some nautical rope and we are going to wrap it around this bell. You can see over to the right that one of the bells disappeared because Miriam really wanted to play with one and I was fine with that. So I am going to take some twine and a bell and put that inside so it can have an actual bell vibe to it. And then now I'm gonna come in with some of the brown rope from the Dollar Tree 
And I really love the way the nautical rope looks mixed with the brown rope. I just think it has such a natural just beauty to it. So once I've combined them and I've really cleaned it all up, wrapping it nice and tight, you now can leave it like this or you can garnish it and embellish it a little bit. Here's the bell at the bottom. I'm going to take some of that frosted fern that I love so much at Christmas time. I just think it's so pretty. And they sell frosted ferns at other craft stores for so much money and you can get it at the Dollar Tree, which is awesome for a crafter's budget. Go ahead and glue on some of that frosted fern. I'm going to just push that down in there. And I love combining it with some boxwood as well. And then I'm going to come in with a twine bow and you have this beautiful high end piece that you would never know came from the Dollar Tree. This project is a little bit more in the effort department, but it's only because there is one rope that we're going to uncoil and it does take about 10 minutes to do it. But overall, this is a really easy project as well. I would recommend having someone help you uncoil the rope because then it will make it go a lot quicker and you're not fighting with it trying to not back up on itself as you're trying to untwist this rope. So. The reason why we're going to be untwisting it is because we want two different textures. We want the rope that is wrapped tightly and then we want a rope that is just a straight strand. So once you've got it untwisted, you will have three sections and we're only going to be using two of them today. So the third one we're going to put to the side for something else. Now for the next rope, the second one out of the three that we're going to be using, we're not going to untwist that and then at this point we're going to take one of the straight ones that is untwisted and the other nautical rope that is twisted and we're going to take one of these foam wreath rings from the Dollar Tree. All of these supplies can be found at the Dollar Tree. And then we're going to just simply glue that down into place. Now at this point we're going to take that rope and we're going to continue to wrap it around and around and around keeping that same pattern where we want the straight one in between the wrapped rope. And this is the thing. I saw this wreath online. <laughs> it was so extremely expensive and I knew that we could do it for a fraction of the cost, which is what we're doing today. We're doing this wreath for about $6 versus the $100 that I saw online for. Now the trick with the rope, as you're wrapping it at the halfway point, you're going to see that one of the twisted ropes, is going to get you about halfway around the wreath form and you're going to have to get out the next one and the second straight strand. But what you're going to do is you're going to continue to compress the inner circle rope so that stays nice and tight and then the outer is a little bit looser which is going to give you this beautiful pattern. Isn't this so cool? Now at the very end you're going to have a little spot where you're still going to see that green foam we don't want to see that. So that third rope, that's when it's going to come back into play. The one we untwisted, that extra one. And you're just going to wrap it around to conceal it. Now at this point, we're going to add in some greenery. I added two ferns and I'm coming back in with some of this green garland pick that you can get from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just going to keep playing with it. I like to lift up my wreaths so I can see them in different views because if it's just laying flat on the table sometimes your garlands and your greenery your flowers all the things you're putting on it it can come out a little flat so i do like to lift it kind of look at it from different angles now at this point i'm adding in some of these frosted berries i just think they're so beautiful with the green and the red so traditional i love those colors for christmas and i'm going to add a sweet gingham bow right in the middle now we can leave it there because this is so adorable or we can take it a step further which is what I always love doing. So with that extra third rope again we are going to just tie a knot, slide over about two inches and then tie another knot. Now the reason why we're doing this is I like to have a nice clean look. I don't want to distract from the rope at the top and all that work we just did. 
So I'm going to create a hook on the back side of the wreath using this extra piece of rope. So you can see that those two knots are going to keep the rope from untwining or twisting or fraying, whatever. And I'm going to just glue it down. And now I have this nice loop that's on there that can hook onto my wreath holder for my door. Now these bells are from the Dollar Tree as well. You get nine in a pack. I'm going to be using about five of them. You can use as many as you want. And then I'm going to take some twine and I'm going to just thread it through and I'm going to tie three knots so it's on there nice and secure. Cut off that extra piece I don't want and then take a little bit of hot glue. Sorry I was off screen for this part just a little bit. And then I'm going to just make sure that hot glue locks in those knots. And then I'm going to pick up my bells, be careful because they will tangle. Tie them in a knot once I get them all in the position I want. And then I'm going to just simply glue them in place. You do not have to add the bells, but I think the bells are just so beautiful. And it just brings in that Christmas spirit when someone hears it as it jingles on the door. I just love the way it looks and I love the way it sounds. So now I'm just simply gluing it in place cutting off that extra piece that you don't want at the top, and then again, adding some more glue. I feel like the finishing touches is where sometimes people rush, and these last little bits is how you make it look high-end and that it came from a store. For this craft, we're going to be using this nautical rope and this ornament from the Dollar Tree. Go ahead and start by cutting off the tag and then cutting off the tip of the rope. We actually are going to be untwisting it and we're going to need enough to be able to do the project we're working on. So go ahead and make sure you have a nice long strand of it unwrapped. You don't have to do the entire rope. You're going to need just enough to be able to wrap around this ornament and you'll see as I'm going, it'll help you be able to gauge how much you're going to need. So once you've got it untwisted enough, go ahead and cut it off. And then this is where this ornament is going to start transforming into something so beautiful, so farmhouse, almost a modern farmhouse or a boho farmhouse. We're going to go ahead and take the rope and we are going to glue on the rope down the ornament. Now you can see that I've gone the one direction going around and then the other direction going around and then we're going to have these four long strands down at the bottom. Don't cut them off yet because I'll show you how much you're going to need. Then we're going to go into the middle spots and we're going to fill that in with more rope. So we're going to make sure that going all the way around the rope you're going to have eight coming down the sides of the ornaments. Now for those extra four that we added, go ahead and cut those off down at the very bottom, add some glue and smooth them out. Then come up to the top and we're going to clean it up. Now I'm going to take another strand of the untwisted rope and we're going to go ahead and just coil that up around the top of the ornament's lid so that way it looks really pretty and really polished and it all goes together looking really cohesive. Just make sure as you're gluing it to keep tapping the rope really snugly up next to each other. You don't want to see the metal popping through because then it's going to make it look like it's homemade versus store-bought. Then when you get to the top, go ahead and cut off the extra and then you're going to just take that and coil that underneath that loop where you're going to be able to hang it up with the hook later. Tuck it all in there nice and tight, add some hot glue and make sure it's nice and finished. Then down at the bottom, we're going to take some more of that rope and those four strands that we have that were longer and we're going to wrap some rope around the bottom four strands just like how we did up at the top. And then once you've got that all glued in place, go ahead and start fraying those four ropes that we had that we kept that were longer. Now I realized as I was doing this that a brush would probably be the best option. So I ran and I grabbed my daughter's brush and I just brushed it all out and then cut off the excess and it's ready to be displayed. Now 
This DIY is super simple. We are going to take these wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree and some nautical rope and start by untwisting the rope. This is a little tricky because the longer it gets, the harder it is to untwist. So just be patient with this and maybe put on a movie while you're untwisting it. You actually don't even need a movie's length worth, but I would just say maybe put on some music while you're untwisting it. Then once I had it untwisted, you can see that I added a little bit of hot glue to the end to make sure it didn't unravel and now I'm just going to follow along the shape of the heart. When I get back down to the point, I started at the point, wrapped around, and when I got back down to the point, I pulled it around the front side of the heart to continue on coiling it around on this wood piece. These are gonna turn into the most darling heart coasters that are neutral enough that you can keep out all spring long or even all year long because I like having hearts in my home. I don't know what it is about the shape, but I have always loved it. Once you end up going all the way around, you get down to the end, you're gonna take that last little bit and you're gonna cut it off and just sneak it down in there with some hot glue without burning your finger and then you're ready to use them for coasters. This DIY is super easy to do. You're gonna take one of these wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree and one and a half of the nautical ropes. You're gonna cut off this twine that they have on there because we're not gonna be needing that. And then we're gonna simply start by taking our rope and gluing it on the bottom but where it's hanging over the edge a little bit because we're gonna come around on the top side to create another layer and that's gonna create a really beautiful tray with this heart. As you take your hot glue, just keep following along the shape of the heart, making sure that you're going over that edge just a little bit, and then just keep going along the shape, making sure you put enough glue so it really binds to the heart. And then when you get to the very end of the heart, the point, you're going to glue it to the side of that other rope, and then you're gonna come up around and bring it around the top of the other side of the heart. Then you're going to just simply repeat the same process. You're going to add some more glue and then put down the rope. Now you can see here that I'm untwisting it just a little bit to make it a little bit thicker because in a minute we're going to put glue in between the two ropes. I don't want to see the wood heart coming between the two ropes. We want to make sure that's sandwiched in there really nicely so all you see when you look on the side of this tray is going to be the rope. Then when you get back down to the point of the heart, go ahead and cut off the extra, twist everything into place with some hot glue and make sure it's nice and sealed. Now here I am coming back in with that hot glue and I'm just sandwiching those ropes together making sure it's a nice clean finish so you don't see that heart in between. Then you're going to take that other half of the rope, this is where I said one and a half ropes, and you're gonna go around one more layer around the heart. This rope is long enough to be able to go around the heart two times but you need a half a rope to be able to finish the complete thing. And then you're gonna have some handles that you're just gonna simply glue on one side and then on the other side. This tray is adorable and you can put whatever you want on it and display it throughout the springtime. Next, we're going to be making a little nest frame. I've got some of this dried grass, a frame that I had on hand from a thrift store a while back, some of these Easter eggs, and some rope. Start by taking the frame and painting it white or whatever color you want, but I like white, <laughs> so I'm gonna paint it white. And now I'm gonna take some scrapbook paper that has music notes on it and glue that down onto the frame. Now at this point, we are gonna take some of the rope and we're gonna start coiling it around in a circle to create a nest. Keep those nice and tight as you possibly can. Here's another nest I made around Christmas time where I did the exact same method, but just added some grass at the top. Once you've coiled it around and around and around, decide how big you want the nest to be and then cut off the end and add in some of this dry grass. Once you've got your dry grass in the center, it's ready to add in a little baby egg. But first what we're gonna do to get rid of some of that glitter, cause I don't really like the look of the glitter on there. It's not as 
cute desirable as I'm going for. So I'm gonna take the egg and I'm gonna roll it in a robin's egg blue color and I'm just going to make sure it's got a nice coat on it. Now robin's eggs have little speckles of black paint on it so once your blue is dry, this is one of my favorite techniques for getting texture on objects, the little speckles of paint. Take a toothbrush, flick the paint onto it and you've got it all speckled on. Now you're going to take your frame, sand it up a little bit, pop in that backing, pop in that Robin's blue egg, and you've got a beautiful spring decor piece. Our supplies for this project are going to be a 20 inch wreath form, eight to nine ropes depending on how long your ropes are from the Dollar Tree and then one of these 3D wreath forms we're taking the second ring from the outer form. We are going to take that ring and right at the joint bend it where it pops right in half and then go across to the other side and cut right there. Now you're going to notice there are little circles on the middle of these arches now that's where the 3D wreath form all comes together with one little metal rod. We're going to bend it right at that point to create the bunny ears. Start by bending the first one towards you and then the second one away from you. And you can see that I've already pinched it into place of the bunny ears. So one is going to come towards you and one's going to come away from you. That's going to allow you to be able to lock those two into place so it stays in that shape of a bunny ear. Now we're going to come in through the first and second ring, right where you see that connecting joint, and we're gonna hook those ears back together. Now using three zip ties, you're going to zip it right in the middle, and then you're gonna come onto the side of the ear and the first ring, zip tie that one, and then go over to the other side of the ear, zip tying the other side to that first ring. This is gonna strengthen the ears really really strong and it's not going to go anywhere for your bunny ears. Once you've got those all zip tied in go ahead and take your scissors and just simply cut off those long zip ties. You don't want those in the way they're just kind of messy and then after you've got all of that nice and secure you're now going to move on to your rope. Take your rope, hot glue the rope on and we're going to start at the ear. So you're going to just keep twisting around your wire and your ear as tightly as you can. You want this to be nice and snug and I kept adding some glue about every three or four times I wrapped it around because we don't want to see the wire and we want to keep the rope being consistent in its tightness. So when you get to the top of the ear you're going to add some glue and then come back down the other side. Once you've gotten down the other side of the bunny ear come down onto that 20 inch wreath form and then just keep wrapping around. You're going to notice because the wreath is round that the rope sometimes wants to be looser on the outer part of the wreath form. So just make sure you double back into those spots where it might need a little bit of extra rope and then just keep going forward after that. Use hot glue as needed to secure the rope in its place that you want it. Make your way all the way around the wreath until you get to your finishing point and cut off the rope. Again, I used about nine, eight or nine rope packages from the Dollar Tree to complete the full way around the bunny. Now at this point, we're gonna go on to the ears. I am taking some hot glue. I went around with a nice straight line on the back of the ear. I'm smoothing on some white burlap and then once it's all patted down, massaged into the glue, I'm going to come in with my scissors and cut right along the line where that hot glue is so it's a nice clean look. I think it looks so adorable having the white burlap be inside the bunny's ears. I decided to add a couple of fern leaves onto my bunny's ears. I thought this would be so pretty and add a little bit of that spring touch. And now I'm gonna start adding on my bows. You can add on whatever kind of bow you want to add on. I'm going to be going with a sage green and a peach look to this bunny wreath. The first one was a double loop bow, and now I'm going to show you how to make a really simple traditional bow that looks really full. So you can see here I've got about 12, 13 inches length in a ribbon. I glued it into the center, pinched it into the middle, and now I'm going to take another piece. 
I'm going to fold and tuck over the sides, glue it down just a little bit to hold it into place, nothing too crazy with that glue. And then now I'm going to take that, put that into the center of that loop bow that we made earlier. We pinched it right in the middle and now we're going to just simply glue that and wrap that around into place, tuck in that end where the back side of this bow is going to be and glue that down. This is the easiest way to make a perfect looking bow. Now to add on the tails, you're just going to take some extra ribbon, get it to the length that you want, add in your glue, add on your bow. Isn't that the easiest way to make a bow? <laughs> There's a lot of times people struggle with patterns on ribbon. This is the quickest way to do it. If you have a pattern on a ribbon or you're just not in general really good at tying bows and we all have our different skills. Don't ever feel bad if you can't figure out how to do it. It just takes practice and just keep trying until you get it to the way you like it. And then in the end, all I'm going to do is add on this pretty poppy peach flower. The very last step is to simply add on a piece of rope on the back to be able to hang it up and you've got yourself the most charming, beautiful bunny wreath for your front door. This video was so much fun to put together for you all and I hope that you feel inspired. It is amazing all the different styles that rope can work with. From farmhouse, coastal, boho, modern, and the list goes on and on. So I hope that you will give this textural medium a try in your own home. Now I only touched on 20 ideas, but I know that there are so many others. So leave a comment down below to let me know a craft project that you made using rope. Now I'm going to recommend a video here at the end that I hope you will enjoy. Thanks so much for stopping in and visiting with me today. And until the next episode, bye friends.